Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Anthem video, and today I want to bring you a build guide for the Interceptor, a melee-focused build. A lot of you guys have been asking if I will be doing build guides, I did them during the demo, some very early ones, and I said in the full game I will be following up with much more in-depth ones, and today I want to kick it off with a melee-focused Interceptor build. I am working on a Colossus one, which is very close to being done, but I'm missing a couple of components, so hang tight for that, it'll be with you hopefully towards the end of this week. But today, this build is the one that Vesmore has been running, he is our resident Interceptor, and it is a lot of fun to mess around with. So if you do enjoy this, then like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, and if you haven't entered our giveaway for a chance to win a custom-built PC, an Anthem PC from the guys over at box.co.uk, be sure to click that link in the description box down below. Now, to begin with, if we dive into the forge, we're going to start by going over the abilities. We'll speak about weapons, and then finally, we'll talk about components and talk about the way that it all rounds up together and allows you to dive into a pack of enemies in Grandmaster difficulty and stay alive whilst hacking your way through them using your melee ability. So first up, under your assault system, you have the Venom Bomb. The Masterwork version is called Serpent's Veil. There's an additional bonus for this one, the kind of intrinsic perk for Masterwork, where melee weapon defeats increase all acid damage by 100% for 10 seconds. This, as abilities go, is just one of your best group primers available. It's got a large AoE effect, and it has a relatively low recharge time, so generally speaking, it is always available to you. Acid, of course, reduces enemy resistances, making them take more damage, which of course is very useful when paired with follow-up attacks. As for inscriptions, generally speaking, Speaking, if you have anything that increases your recharge speed or your damage, then that is typically preferred. As for your strike system, you're then going to take Tempest Strike, which in the Masterwork version is called Sudden Death. The additional bonus for this one is that if you hit an enemy, it detonates a fiery explosion. This is a high damage move with a, again, relatively low recharge time. The bonus small AoE explosion from the fire is kind of good at hitting enemies that are closely huddled together. And if you're looking for inscriptions for this one, generally speaking, things that increase your damage, like physical damage are good, and of course, anything on recharge rate as well. As for your support system, generally speaking, you will be taking Target Beacon. It is good for both when you're playing solo, if you're playing in a team, throw it on the enemy, and of course, you then deal more damage. However, if for some reason you don't necessarily have that, or you have a better Rally Cry and you want to, you know, deal with status effects, then, you know, fair enough, run with whatever you please. But Target Beacon, generally speaking, is the one you want to pick. As for your weapons, now for the most part you will be able to choose kind of what you want, but the one you definitely want to try and grab is the Unending Battle. It's a machine pistol and it has a perk called Gladiator's Wrath, where if you hit an enemy at point blank range, it increases your weapon and melee damage by 110% for 5 seconds. It is worth noting this buff seems to show up in game as Striker's Savagery right now, as opposed to Gladiator's Wrath, so that might just be like an old name, so it just kind of needs to be updated, but regardless, that's how it works. So this is definitely a very good weapon to have. Of course, on top of that, your secondary is kind of up to you. A few choices could be things like the Rolling Carnage Shotgun, where if you dash, it increases the weapon's damage by 50% for 20 seconds. That can stack up to three times. You have Truth of Tarsus, which of course is the Devastator Sniper Rifle, where hitting weak points and enemies under a status effect will of course set off a chain combo. You have Divine Vengeance, the Assault Rifle we spoke about in a recent video, where every third weak point hit causes large fire explosions, or you even have the obvious one, the Avenging Herald Heavy Pistol, where Raptor's Deadeye, if you hover, it increases your weapon damage by 200%. But honestly, the secondary weapon is kind of up to you, so you can just pick and choose this as you see fit. Do, however, keep in mind that this build as a whole is mainly focused on just clearing regular enemies, all the trash mobs, everything you encounter in a stronghold except for the boss. The melee builds, generally speaking, aren't boss killers. You don't tend to go up and start hacking at their feet if you're fighting titans, if you're fighting the tyrant queen, if you're fighting anything like that. Generally speaking, melee is not the way to go, so this is for everything else, but you can still be incredibly valuable because even in Grandmaster, some of those enemies, some of those mobs can hit incredibly hard, so knowing that you can literally get up in their face, dive your way through and just hack through them is still incredibly valuable. However, moving on from there, we then want to speak about the components. Now, part of the reason that you are so tanky with this build is because you have a full suite of masterwork components. They, of course, come with additional armor on and shields, so that in itself gives you a bit more stuff to work with, but when you actually pair it with these specific components, that does, of course, allow for better melee damage and a bit more survivability. The first one is Way of the Swift, which increases your assault system damage, which is the Venom Bomb, by 5%, and any left bumper hits increase your right bumper damage by 50% for 5 seconds. So you land a Venom Bomb, and then your Tempest Strike is more powerful. You have Conductive Lattice, which increases electricity damage, resistance and gear cooldown speed, and if you perform a small melee hit streak of 3, 
then it detonates an electric explosion. Now, you won't necessarily get that all the time, but keep in mind if you are killing a group of enemies and there's a shielded enemy nearby and you do kick off that electric explosion, it is very good at stripping shields. Wave the Bold increases your aura combo pulse strength by 40%, and if you defeat an enemy with a melee, it restores 20% of your armor. Keep in mind, armor is the green health, shield is blue, so basically, by defeating an enemy with a melee attack, you're healing yourself. On top of that, you have Wear Resolve, which increases the intercept to melee damage by 10%, and if you dash, it increases your melee damage by 40% for 10 seconds. You then have Way of Integration, which increases acid damage and resistance by 20%, and oxygen capacity, don't really care about that one too much, but Gear Hit Streaks increase all damage by 30% for 5 seconds. And then finally, you have the Elusive Talisman, which increases weapon damage by 25%, and if you dash 3 times, it refills the equipped weapon magazine. So, those are all the components, those are the abilities, those are the weapons. But how does it actually work? Well, here's a little rundown of the actual flow for the build. The first thing you do is you find a pack of enemies, ideally a nice group of enemies that you can take full advantage of. You then jump and dash above the enemies in order to proc Way of Resolve. And if you can then get close enough in the process, you can also fire off Unending Battle to trigger Gladiator's Wrath or Striker Savagery. Once you've done that, you'll then use Serpent's Veil, making sure to hit as many enemies as possible, which is your Venom Bomb. If you hit at least two targets, your damage will be buffed by 30% for 5 seconds, with your Sudden Death ability being buffed by an additional 50% due to using Serpent's Veil. You then detonate your combo on the biggest enemy using your 220% buffed Sudden Death ability. This should either kill them or severely damage the target you hit, as well as kill off any smaller enemies in the process. You then begin meleeing your way through the leftover targets. Conductive Lattice will then allow you to shred through the shields as well as doing extra damage. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on your buffs at this point and renew any that have fallen off. And keep in mind that dashing will not only give you a 40% extra damage to your melee, but it will also keep your unending battle topped up, meaning you basically never need to reload and waste time on the reload animation. If you then take a lot of damage, it is of course a good idea to strategically melee down the easiest enemies first, and doing so will then give you back 20% of your HP for each of the enemies killed. So kind of keep an eye as you're doing this on like the trash mob, so to speak, the ones that do go down very quickly. They are basically your free heals. And of course, once Serpent's Veil is off cooldown, assuming there are still enemies, you can then rinse and repeat. Throw the Venom Bomb, jump with a Tempest Strike, you get the idea. All of this allows you to stay up close and personal, even in Grandmaster difficulty, hack through enemies, really take advantage of the Interceptor's melee abilities, the melee prowess, and of course, stay alive in the process. So even though the Interceptor is technically speaking not a tank, you can still be pretty tanky with this build. So it's a lot of fun for those of you that really do want to embody the Interceptor's kind of roguelike abilities, roguelike sort of characteristics, definitely consider checking this out. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions about the build, how it works, then drop a comment down below. If you guys have got any ideas for additional things you've been working on, by all means let us know. And of course keep it locked because we'll have plenty more builds coming for the other classes very soon. Thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check out some more awesome stuff from us here at Arix Gaming, then you should definitely try to catch 269 and Paradise Central streaming six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. They play a wide range of games, and what's more, we also have the end game store. By watching their streams, you earn currency, and you can redeem that currency on the end game store for really cool prizes. Those can range from things like games, comics, and figures, all the way up to controllers, capture cards, and even consoles. So definitely drop by and become part of the community. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you're subscribed and be sure to click on that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. You can watch more videos by clicking on the options here. But once again, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.